Hi, I'm Daz, and this is my wartime civilian receiver that I've just finished restoring. I've always wanted one of these receivers since I saw a friend's collection of wartime radios. It's got a very austere sort of look to it, and uh, I quite like it. So um, this is a short video just showing a few of the um, um, techniques I used to restore this. These receivers were released sometime after June 1944 and the idea was to build a receiver that used the minimum of raw materials and uh, a design that would be common to all the manufacturers that would be making them. I understand, I believe it's over 40 or more manufacturers made them. Um, my label on the back is a little bit um, torn but it basically gives you the basic instructions how to operate the receiver and I quite like the in the interest of wartime economy switch off when not in use. I thought we'd just have a look inside the receiver and uh, here we can see a large permanent magnet uh, loudspeaker. As we go down you can see that the uh, rectifier valve is situated on top of the transformer and that's a very very meaty looking transformer um, for the task in hand. The receiver as you can see has four valves so it's a short super hat and the um, detection of the radio signal done is done by a West Sector, which is like a RF um, metal um, rectifier, so a very interesting device in, in, in here. And uh, just moving further down, a pair of aerial sockets, one is an attenuated aerial socket, and unusually a main switch is situated on the back of the receiver. Um, so that's a little bit different, not combined with the volume control. The radio has just medium wave and doesn't have long wave and has a very very basic scale just consisting of a metal disc and a slot with the stations marked on which were obviously important at the time. I understand that you could get a long wave conversion kit for this radio. Indeed there's a hole in the middle of the uh, on the chassis in the middle between the two knobs um, and uh, that could be fitted to give you the long wave option when long wave restarted after the war. Um, my paint's a little bit worn but um, the set after all is, is you know 70 years old so you can expect the paint to be a little bit yellowed and uh, minimum effort was to clean it in case it flaked off but uh, a very very nice set and uh, the following clips will be some clips I took while I was um, working on the radio and some of the problems I had. This is my civilian receiver and uh, I haven't done any restoration on this so I thought I'd just take a little bit of footage of what it looks like before I've done any work to it. original two pin plug and the lead doesn't sound too good It looks like I have some grid leakage issues with some of the valves. The uh, anode voltage of the mixer is dropping. 
and the bias is going towards positive as the valve warms up after a minute or so. There goes the grid voltage. And the anode has dropped. I fitted a pair of um, substitute valves for the mixer and the IF. And now the bias voltage is looking a little bit more where it should be. It's now minus two and a half, and the anode is now 100 volts, so that looks a little bit more like where we want to be. I'm just doing the RF alignment, but unfortunately I've got a another valve problem the looks of it. I think there's something wrong with my rectifier valve. It's not the base, so, oh dear, <laughs> another valve needed. This is the inside, now I've finished, and uh, I managed to restuff the cardboard capacitor cases with some new capacitors to try and retain some of the original look note that's the west selector diode you can see there I'll just zoom in I'll try and hold it steady 